us as one of my students has been my good luck, like it has been having all of the others. And some that are not, not here. Okay. Uh, I would like to talk uh, if, uh, about a few things that, um, because the, the time is limited, uh, I'm going to talk about uh, the work of Tsechun Chen and Daisuke Hota and, and Yoichiro and uh, uh, Kriti Bargava and Jim Carton and uh, uh, some new applications that, that we developed that are not so new anymore, but they are exciting. So uh, uh, we always thought if the data simulation system which is uh, uh, having observations and forecast uh, 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 worked on by the analysis that gives initial conditions to the model and that continues this. So this is uh, the only time in which the observations and the, and the forecast are there together. So it, we should use it for even more than this classical application. So that what uh, what we should do is, is to uh, take advantage of the fact that we have forecast and observations at the same time and try to use the analysis not just to create initial conditions to the model but also to give feedbacks to the observation and give feedbacks to the forecast. And that's what I'm going to talk about now. So the... the uh, and we have been, been working, uh, as, as it's obvious, a lot with, with ensemble common filter. And, and it, it's so simple and powerful that it should encourage to use data simulation for improvements beyond the goal. So the main goal is to combine optimally observations and model forecast. And it, it, we've done a very good job with that, as, as Takemasa showed. But we should also try to use data simulation to improve the observations and improve the model, and also in, in, improve the model by parameter estimation, like we are able to estimate surface carbon fluxes as evolving parameters, and that's improving the model of carbon fluxes and, and of carbon in the atmosphere. And finally, the uh, Earth system models used by IPCC for climate prediction and climate deciding what, what, whether climate change is actually taking place, uh, and also integrated assessment models have many are very comprehensive. They have ve many natural sub models like the atmosphere, the ocean, the the. Uh, uh, land and, 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 and the, the vegetation and many sub-models, but they don't include the human system which totally dominates the Earth system. And as a result, we, we just published the paper we, which where Takemasa is our co-author. Uh, we are very happy about that. But we point out that the current integrated assessment models as well as the IPCC take the human system, they develop a very comprehensive earth system model and the human system is just uh, the population the, uh, population that, that's estimated by, by the United Nations, for example, how the population will grow. So it's not really coupled in a two-way, and that's something which is, is, is very... <laughs> Thank you. Sorry for... Uh, we, sh we should couple the Earth system with the human system in a two-way, in the same way that when we want to predict El Niño, we couple the atmosphere with the ocean, and we don't say, oh, we have a great atmospheric model, let's get the sea surface temperature from the United Nations and the, the, the estimations of the future, because that's not what nature does. Nature couples the atmosphere and the ocean, and it also couples the Earth system with the human system. And we should use these tools that Takemasa described so well 
to to do models for the future that show that we are in, in not in a very good path. So uh, we we have been do using uh, LTKF and, and you all know this this uh, figures and the LTKF was. Uh, different from an other ensemble forecast system because it's based on the localization is based on on the observation so so we when we do the data simulation for a grid point we choose the localization by choosing the observation so and uh, it's remarkable because it's such a simple idea of the uh, uh, we do global forecast and uh, then construct perturbation matrices and then compute the predicted observations and the perturbation matrices and then the genius of Brian Hunt uh, pointed out that we could solve exactly the Kalman filter equations in ensemble space which is m much lower uh, dimension and as a result basically this is the whole uh, system so we we have a very nice powerful system so I would like to show this figure from from the UK Met Office where where they used uh, forecast sensitivity to observations and they are impacted there for some reason but I hope they stop doing that so FSO is is computed uh, using uh, the a joint model and it shows which observations reduce the error have a negative error impact uh, faster and then uh, how, how on the average the the imp only about 51 percent or so the, of the observations give an improvement and that's because the forecast is so good but they also pointed out that They, pl they plan to use uh, ensemble forecast system observation methodology because it doesn't need the adjoint. So le let me talk quickly about improving the observations, ensemble forecast sensitivity observations and proactive uh, quality control. I was lucky to uh, derive the very simple equation for ensemble forecast sensitivity to observations. And we immediately, with Yoichiro and, and Daisuke uh, Ota and Daisuke Hota, we talked, uh, uh, we thought we should use this for quality control. And, uh, uh, and Daisuke showed that EFSO can be used after only six hours so that the bad observations can be identified, collected, and withdrawn with useful metadata so they can be improved. So we call this proactive quality control, which is much stronger than the regular quality control. And Hota also invented uh, ensemble forecast sensitivity to, to observations application to tune the observation error covariance. And I'm going to take advantage of the fact that Sechun Chen is not here to, to show uh, his results, which are very, very uh, 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 in, impressive, uh, an impressive improvement with respect to the previous results of Hota and Dota. And he actually got a prize of, for the best student presentation in, at the uh, AMA, AMS. Uh, 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 Daisuke Hota had the, the dream of, of being able to use uh, uh, EFSO in as proactive quality control within the data simulation. And he showed, for example, that uh, modest winds, uh, which were detected as, as making the forecast worse because it gives a, an increase, a positive error, it was already uh, identified at, at six hours. And he showed this beautiful figure that shows for modest winds, uh, uh, every observation was classified as improving the six hour forecast or making it worse compared to the uh, next six hour analysis. And you can see that the red ones are, are uh, uh, making it 
worse and, and the blue ones are beneficial. And when we withdrew the, the, the bad ones or the ones that were detrimental, not necessarily bad, but the forecast, the six hour forecast uh, and the 24 hour forecast clearly improved in, in that area where we found this. And, and there are uh, 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 clusters of, of modish winds that were occasionally found to be detrimental. And when uh, Daisuke took them out, we, he got uh, uh, in the six hour forecast 24, 72, 96, mostly blue, which means the errors were reduced by taking away these observations estimated in the six hour forecast to be the detrimental. And now Tsechun is uh, doing, uh, continuing the pioneering uh, work of, of Daisuke and, and Yoichiro, and, and he, he just thought of a completely new approach rather than trying to find regions where, which were affected it, he took observation by observation. And here is a beautiful plot that shows the, for each observation, whether it was a, a, a positive or uh, had a, was de detrimental or beneficial. If it's blue, it's beneficial. And if it's large, it ca it's very beneficial. And same with red, for example, here is a very bad, a very detrimental observation. And we have blocks of of uh, observations at the pole that have uh, patches of red, which are modest winds in the, at the pole. So he, his su simple suggestion was just, just keep all the observations unless the, the, they are shown to be op uh, detrimental and by more than 10 to the minus 5 joule per kilogram using uh, the, the moist total energy. And uh, uh, he also, so the, the three uh, data denial experiments that uh, methods that he compared were uh, Daisuke's uh, uh, the, uh, regional detection and then the, this threshold that I just mentioned that takes away all the red observations that are larger than a certain size. And, and then he thought of what uh, Anna Trevisan had uh, published, showing that it would be better. Well, for many years she has had been saying data simulation should take place on the growing error subspace, not on the whole subspace. And when when we do a, a proactive quality control, we can do that because we can we. If we check if the six hour forecast is uh, is made worse by the by by certain observations and uh, if if it is made more worse or the la errors are larger after twenty four hours so he uh, if the errors are are uh, uh, the errors are get worse and and they get more worse at after 24 hours, then the assumption is that these observations are produce errors that are in the growing space and they can be taken away. And so he, uh, these are all the observations that he rejected using the threshold method saying just the six hour observations are, are larger than, are, are, have the wrong sign and are larger than a certain amount. And here he just checked whether the 24 hour uh, errors produced by an observation were larger. Okay, so he, the results that he got are, are very, very encouraging. Uh, Jota got very impressive improvements by doing regional checking, but by doing this global checking on all the observations, the reduction of errors was which is about 0.5% here is, is about 0.3% uh, here. And with the analysis in the unstable space, which can only be done for, for reanalysis where you have the future observations, uh, he got like 5% on uh, an average. And then the improvement of the anomaly correlation was 
uh, uh, if we look at the globe, was uh, uh, the anomaly correlation was increased by using the threshold approach and even more so by using the analysis in the unstable space. And he also checked uh, another thing, which is uh, whether the, the benefit accumulates. So he cycled the, the, these observ observations, and he got that the cycling was better than, than doing one by one uh, up, up to about day five. And another uh, problem is that uh, if we take away the observations, we should have to do the, the, the analysis again. And that's a very expensive thing. But, but uh, uh, we thought with Yoichiro Ota starting uh, <coughs> that it would be possible to just use the approximation uh, used in the, in, in the PQC, which, which is estimates the impact of each observation. So we can just use the same estimation to co change the analysis. And you can see that the, the estimated co correction using the PQC and the true correction are very, very similar. And they are highly correlated. So that's very cheap. So and, uh, yeah, another uh, the, uh, uh, using EFSO and PQC can be used uh, other things which are very good. For example, <coughs> when we have a new instrument, it's difficult to tell whether it's improving the forecast or not, whether it's good or bad, because there are so many observations already that it has to compete with everybody else. But if so, can be used as a clear track of the impact of all observing systems, and, and, the, <coughs> and it provides the, the, the ability of doing a quick quality control. And this is perhaps the most important figure that, that uh, Tse Chun created. It shows the, the average, uh, of, for example, these are Ray Winsons every 12 hours. So it, it, uh, we have large improvements uh, because the error gets reduced. It's negative. The, the change of the error is negative. Uh, and and we see all this. And, and here are aircraft. But we see that there are some instruments that if you follow easily, like you can do with this, the, the impact, you can see that there are some instruments like uh, these, are, uh, these are profiler wings, for example, in red that occasionally give an, a, a positive impact, a, a positive increment, which means it, the error is, is worse. And, and uh, there are several, several. And the green ones are modest winds that have a tendency. So this, pro, this is a, a, such a powerful tool for quality control that should be used routinely in all systems. And uh, now we look at, the, at this bias uh, at this modest uh, winds, and, and we've been working since Yoichiro first found them. And what what Tsechun uh, just plotted here was the three types of, of uh, uh, modest winds, uh, cloud track winds, water vapor for cloudy, and water vapor for clear. And he plotted the, the, whether the innovation was negative in blue. Here, here is shown in, in blue. And, and positive, uh, here it's mostly red. And, and this is something that we have found for, for MODIS, that uh, uh, when the, in these polar regions the innovation is positive, it has a tendency to be detrimental, like, like here. Uh, and and uh, there are many more details that you can learn from this, but so we are struggling trying to, to find the origin of this. And this, these biases that show in the modest winds uh, uh, with red, red when, when the observation increment is positive don't, don't appear in, in very similar uh, 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 winds, for example, geostationary winds.